Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week we're going to look at why the US stock market will not crash in 2022. Then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Now remember, as you subscribe, click that bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune in to our live Australian Stock Market Show, which is on every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. This is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your questions. Now, most stock exchanges around the world have performed poorly this year, with only Singapore, Hong Kong, London, and Malaysia trading in positive territory. While Australia is down over 3% in 2022, the world is more concerned with the US markets as many are suggesting they are fundamentally overvalued. And as a result, they've been hit harder, especially the tech sector as the NASDAQ is down over 13%. There have been many emotive headlines, including the bubble has burst, the crash is happening now, get ready for the biggest crash ever, yet the US markets are only slightly weaker and they are certainly not crashing. This is because the economic situation in the US right now is vastly different to what it was during the crash in 1987 and with the GFC in 2007, as both crashes were preceded by bubbles that were driven by rampant speculation and overborrowing. Neither of these which is prevalent today. That said, I do believe the US stock market is somewhat overvalued, which is a normal occurrence that occurs in any bull market. Right now, inflation in the US is high, which is concerning, although it's not high across the whole economy. Instead, it's contained to areas such as energy costs. So while inflation is high, we need to understand what is driving it. And so far, everything is pointing to things settling once the world supply chain issues are resolved post-COVID. Now, the US Fed Reserve is also talking about four interest rate rises this year, although as so far, it's only been talk and the Fed have been known to say things just to see how the stock market reacts, which has seen all US indices falling. Now, the question remains as to whether the US market will crash this year. Now, whilst I believe the market is slightly overvalued, it will not crash. Instead, it will fall in a normal downward move, most of which has already occurred, if not already over. This year, the Dow Jones has been down around 10%, whilst the S&P 500 has been down around 12%. And there is a possibility they both may fall between 15 and 18% which will be confirmed in the next few weeks. Now, despite this, I believe the US market will have a positive year. So now it's time we discuss the market and as usual, we'll start with what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. The best performing sectors included healthcare up 3.95%, followed by consumer staples up 2.22% and industrials that was up 1.04%. The worst performing sectors included information technology and that was down 3.02%, followed by communication services down 2.72%. And utilities, it was down 2.18% last week. The best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included Magellan Financial Group, which was up a massive 19.82%, followed by Evolution Mining, which is up 12.81%, and Northern Star Resources. That ended the week up 12.71%. The worst performing stocks included Fortescue Metals, that was down 13.05%, followed by Mineral Resources down 10.23%, and QB Insurance Group, that was down 8.48%. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the chance for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. Well, after rising strongly for the first part of February last week, or at least the last sort of eight or nine days of trading days, our market was a little bit weak, showing a little bit of indecision, which I know would be a concern for a lot of people because I've had people suggesting or some people suggesting that, you know, hey, the market's had its low, it's bullish, let's jump in. And it's why I always caution people to trade on confirmation, not speculation. And so far, that warning that I've been putting out to, to everybody has been vindicated, um, at least over the last week or so, as I said, of, of the trading. 
but let's go and have a look at the charts and see what they actually tell us. Now on your screen is a normal monthly chart and on the right is the weekly chart. Uh, same charts that I've been looking at for the last, um, well, for a long period of time and the same one you would have seen last week. And you can see that we made an all-time high in January, which I've mentioned before at 7956 points. Uh, and the market did fall 11.62. Um, and you will remember I've said this could be the low, but I, as I also said at the time, I said the market could go down to around about 6,800 points. So it could just have a one, two weeks up, maybe a little bit more, and then start to fold over and then come back down to these levels. And I'm not saying it's definitely going to do that. But I'm saying the more the longer it goes up in time and price, the more probability that that low is over. But the lesser in time it does that, then the more probability that the low hasn't come in and we need to expect it might happen. Markets generally come down in a zigzag type of pattern. And I'll, I'll draw that if I can find my little tool here, my trend arrow tool. They normally do something like this. It's a pretty normal sort of pattern where you start... Oh, I, didn't do that very well, did I? Let me put it on again. So generally what they do is they come down, they go up a little bit, then they come down a little bit, and then I didn't do it again. Um, so they come down, they do a little bit of a rest period where they pull up a bit, but if this move up is not very much of that whole move down, then the chances of that moving and turning down and going down um, is a lot higher. I would love to have seen our market move up something like this compared to the downward move we've had over the last few weeks. Uh, or this move down through into January there. And if it had done that, the probability would have been less likely. But we do need to be prepared for this to be a bit of a false rally here in February and then the market to turn over. But let's have a look at the weekly chart and have a good look at that. And you can see here, here's the January high that I mentioned, 7,956. We've come down that 11.56% into late January. We've seen one two weeks up, although this week was really starting to show that signs of indecision. It really came back on that Friday, I think it was. It really came down. You can see there the closes there is nearly halfway down the bar, which is suggesting a bit of weakness. Last week we opened, we tried to push up. We made a high of six seven six four zero earlier into the week and that was not higher than that 7646 so it was six points higher and then we closed lower for the week again showing some indecision now we're still way behind below that low oh, sorry that high there at 7956.3 points but you can see here Right back here, this high here, or you know, that close there at 7897 points is the highest weekly close we've had on our market. We haven't closed higher than that on any week all the way through here. So it's showing our market is not super bullish at this point in time. Now I'm going to go onto the daily chart, which is something I rarely do. And you can see that's the high in um, January through there. And we've had that big move down. Then we had this beautiful consistent move here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days straight up. And we've had one, two, three, four, five, six days where it's it's closing low and we've even this day here which was last Thursday and when it went up to that 7640 could not break that high that was really critical if we'd broken that come down through here and then the, uh, last Thursday had broken that high that would have suggested to me that's probable that the market is moving up and we'll wait we'll break that all-time high of 7956 soon but the other little thing that concerned me there is at 7479 is the low of last Friday and look at that one, 7478. So it's only one point higher on the Friday. So if we do get a down day through here, we break through that 7478, then I'd suggest the market is falling over. And we, we do need to expect it will keep continue down and half expect it will go through that low of 7031.9. It may not. We may just come down for a little bit and then start to move up again. But again, it's still too early to confirm anything. And that's why I always suggest trade on confirmation, not speculation. The other thing I always suggest is you don't take your tips from the market itself. You only ever look at the stocks you're trading. So whilst I think the market is indecisive right now, and it's possible that the pendulum is swinging for it to start to fall away again and possibly break that low that we had in January, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be buying stocks. It doesn't mean you should be selling stocks either. And this is a real critical thing. Too many people look at the news on the morning or the night and go, hey, the market's down on the markets up, I'm buying and selling. I never, ever, ever, ever take a buy or sell decision because of the what direction the market is doing. I only ever make buying and selling decisions based on what the stock that I'm looking at is doing. And simply because the stock is not the market, the All Ordinaries Index is 500 stocks that make up that average. So it's an average 
of those 500 stocks, basically. So you, that's what you're seeing. So if the 500 stocks are moving up, well, not even that. If you're looking at the big top 20, top 50 stocks, they're driving the direction of the market. So uh, it doesn't mean there's not going to be stocks if the market's falling away. It doesn't mean there's not going to be stocks for you to buy. And if the market is rising, it doesn't mean you're not going to be selling stocks. And that's really what I want to get through to today. As whilst the market is a little bit weak, and the possibility is rising again that it will fall below 7,000 points, possibly to 6,800 points. The fall's not going to be too much, and I do definitely think it's not definitely not going to crash our market, as I definitely don't think the US market will crash. As I said in my early part of the report, the US market has finished most of its fall. It may do it may be doing exactly what we're doing or have done, just moved up a little bit and it's going to fall away a little bit. But I think the US market will be a little bit more bearish than our market when it does fall down, or if it if it does start to fall away over the next few weeks and that's why I suggested it'll probably be more like 15 to 18 percent from its high not from where it currently is but from its high so you need to be careful about that the Nasdaq is quite weak as you, as you saw so tech stocks are a little bit on the nose if that makes sense in the US and they are a big chunk of the the S&P 500 and again if they're falling it will take uh, they will take the S&P 500 with it down to that sort of 15 to 18 percent but again I'm not saying you know now, don't take your signals of buying and selling in the US market based on what the S&P 500 or the Dow are doing. Or only have a look at the stocks you're looking to trade. So hopefully that makes sense for you today. And as I said, just at the moment, sit on your hands, stay tight. Just look at some really, really good stocks. And if they do give you a good buying signal, then you can take that. If your stocks that you own give you a sell signal, then get out of those. But now it's time to get into your questions. Now, the first question we have today is from Tien, who says, Hey, Dale, I'm a young investor, 25, and looking to slowly build a portfolio over time with the main goal being capital growth and a reliable, steady income stream. Well done for good goals on that one. The first stock and the only one at the moment is 308 BHP shares at $45.03. My question is, how many listings would you recommend new investors stick to? Thank you for your time and videos, Dale. I tune in when the bell goes off. Also, if there is an audio book for your first book, I'd love to purchase it. All of that, probably to answer your question, everything that you're asking is in my first book. So basically in my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, which you can get for free, just got to pay the shipping. And uh, it really does pay for you to read the book rather than listen to it. I don't have an audio book um, for this uh, this book and there's no plans to do an audio book at this. It's probably, if I was to put it on a list, it's probably number 100 on a list of things that Dale needs to do. Uh, and you really do need to read it rather than listen to it because there's a lot of things in there that you need to highlight and go back. And anybody that's already got it, I would suggest read it again and again and again and again and again. You probably need it to read it about 10 times because there's so much in this book that you don't get the first time through or the second time through. There's a lot of complexity in the simplicity, if, if that makes sense too. And, and when traders read this, they go, ah, wow. Um, and it really does help traders. Uh, and, it's, and we've even had full-time traders email me saying, I've read this book and you've really cleaned up my trading. There is uh, How you did it in a, such a simple way is really impressive in this in a book. And again, just pay the shipping and you can get it sent to you. So please do that. But to give you sort of a bit of an answer, so is the, the book will talk to you about portfolio construction. It actually has a portfolio that's growth and income in there for you to tell you how to do that, what sort of stocks you should be picking, how the makeup of those stocks, where, the, where they should be in the index, how to buy, how to sell, how to set your stop losses, money management, um, position sizing, all in the book, mate. So just get the book. Um, but basically, just overview, just to simply answer your question, eight to 12 shares uh, is what we suggest people do, whether you're beginner or you're not beginner, but it'll also share with you how to stick to the right stocks to get the goal for your portfolio. So hopefully that makes sense. But thank you for tuning into the show and, and you know watching uh, Janine and I, um, both not, not just this show today, but also our Tuesday night show. So thank you very much for being a loyal listener or watcher, if that makes sense. But, and thanks for your question. The next question we do have is from Chris, who says, hi, Dale, great show as always. Could you please Please look at Costa Group for me. He says, I do not own this stock, but looking out for a good entry point. Thanks. So let's go and have a quick look at Costa Group here. It's one of the stocks I like to look at from time to time, and uh, it is up on the screen there, and you can see it. You can see that it had its, its heyday way back there in June 2018, up at $8.38, and it's really not had a good life since then uh, in terms of that. There's a lot of issues going on with Costa Group. There was a drought. There was all sorts of supply issues. Obviously, COVID hasn't helped there. Um, it did drop out of bed again there in May, but right now I'm not going to give you any real 
really, really good news. But I do like this stock. Uh, it's just all a matter of time, and you can see the whole history of this stock. Um, it is just languishing there around about that $3 mark there, and so far not looking like it is going to rise. Now, this pattern here, strange looking little pattern there it's a little bit more of a bearish pattern so you might be waiting a quite a while before you get into this stock oh let me just open that weekly chart again if i click on it so you can see here at the moment it's just this really sort of weird pattern i'm not suggesting it won't go up but to go up it would need to get through that sort of three dollar lever mark before i'd start to get too excited about it at the moment and it may do that it really may do that but right now it doesn't look like it will um, I think it's probably going to languish a little bit more before it starts to take off. There's more issues around a whole lot of different things the Costa Group has, but I think long term this is a really, really good stock, but you do need to do your work on it to decide whether it's a stock you want to put into your portfolio. And again, I don't sort of look at stocks in the terms of I'm looking for an entry on this stock. I put stocks on my watch list that I like that suit the style of my portfolio, which is really what I was talking about when I was talking about my book is, is look at the style of your portfolio. It should be the very, very first decision you make. What sort of stock style portfolio do I want? How much time have I got to manage that portfolio? And then the stocks will fit the style of portfolio and the goal of the portfolio, not the other way around. The biggest sin I see people do is they find stocks and then they try and shove it into their portfolio. And it's almost like putting square pegs in round holes. Don't find the stocks first. Look at the portfolio, look at your process, look at the how you're going to manage and your stop losses, your entries, your exit, and all of that first and have that plan first. And then the stocks will naturally just fit in. And that's how a lot of people say to me, there's 500 stocks on the All Lords, what do I look at? And by doing that process first, you narrow down your selection criteria, you actually give you back a lot of time. And a lot of people that I've taught and a lot of people that have read my books, and, and that's definitely the people that do our courses, we give them back so much time. I was only chatting to one gentleman the other day, like Wednesday of last week, and he used to search the market all over the place and he'd spend hours and hours every day looking at the market, looking at videos, doing a whole lot of stuff. And we've given him back hours and hours and hours a week just by teaching him how to look and create that portfolio and that watch list that's a narrowed down focused watch list. So he's more targeted, makes more money, and he spends less time doing it. And I reckon that's a pretty good bonus. So maybe that's a good thing for, for everybody watching to do. But again, might want to buy my book too. It's, as I said, free, just got to pay the shipping. But thank you for that question. But right now, I don't think Costa Group it should be um, one that you'd be putting on your watch list to buy anytime soon. But hey, I could be wrong. It may go up and prove me wrong. The next question we got is from Sanjeev, who says, Hi, Dale and Janine. I would be inter interested to get your thoughts on Reza Core Resources Limited, whether it could be added to my watch list. He said, I really love your shows and opinions regarding stocks. I've been following the show for four months. Thank you. Thanks, matey. I, I really do appreciate your, your um, loyalty to the show, and, and you really do enjoy getting uh, or getting the help from Janine and myself. Uh, let's go and have a look at the stock that you want. Okay, so let me just bring it up there. It's called RNU is the stock ticket code there. Very big bullish stock through, right through here. You can, I mean, you shouldn't need me to tell you to put it on your watch list. You should be doing your research yourself or whether you know that this stock is good for, to fit your watch list. That's sort of what I was saying before. And you can see on the on the week, on the monthly chart there, this stock has been going, went nowhere for many, many, many years. And all of a sudden in December, January this year, it just really, really took off. So that's probably why you're looking at it at the moment. It did make a new all-time high there, which is currently this month at 38 cents. But uh, can I say without being rude to you, if you're asking me, should you be putting it on your watch list, you don't have the skills and tools necessary to to actually trade this type of stock. I think you really do need to be a bit more research around how to make sure that you're understanding what this stock is. At the moment, it's showing some weakness. Let's look at the weekly chart and you can see it is two weeks ago, that was a real big push right up and then came back down to close not far above where it opened there. And then last week was bearish. So I would suggest this is probably gonna come right back into, you know, down below 18 cents, probably even around to around about 10 cents at the moment, because again, what goes up really, really fast can come down just as fast as why you have to pick stocks that really do suit the style of your portfolio and all too often I see people like the person I mentioned before who are wanting to pick low cap stocks and this is again the same as the person I spoke to last week on the Wednesday or uh, the trader who's one of our students 
And when I first met him, that's what he was trading, these low cash stocks. He was playing hit and miss all the time. And he thought he could make good money out of it. But and I said to him, you know, at the time, did you think you knew how to trade the market? And he goes, yes. And I said, well, now you've done our course. What do you think now? And he goes, Dale, is it? I had no clue. Based on what I know now and what I've learned from you, I had no clue, but I was calling myself a trader and I thought I was a trader. And that's pretty common that we see. It's because you just don't know what you don't know. I wouldn't have this stock in my portfolio if I was you. Um, I wouldn't trade this stock myself unless I had plenty of time to do the research properly to be able to pick good entries and exits. So it's, it's really about setting that plan down for your portfolio and making sure you stick to the stocks that fit that plan for you. Because if you don't, then you'll be an emotional trader. You'll be buying on news. You might be buying on, uh, it may go for a few weeks and you'll jump in, jump out and your rules won't be really, really, really solid. The whole idea of trading is to create a lifestyle, not become your lifestyle. So it's about being able to place a trade and have that peace of mind, knowing you've got it covered no matter what happens. Uh, and that's really where you need to, to get to in your trading or your investing. But thank you for that question. Now, the next one we've got is from Nick, who says, Hi, Dale, interested on your thoughts on Woodside Petroleum. Don't own the stock, but thinking about adding it to my long-term two to five-year portfolio, but concerned with volatility and external factors that might impact the stock. Cheers, Nick. Volatility is nothing to be concerned with because volatility is what you want. You just don't, I think what you mean is that downside volatility is what you really don't want. If a stock's volatile and it's going up, then everybody loves that because stocks will move from being not volatile or what we call equilibrium where the buyers and sellers agree and they don't go anywhere. It's only when you get this disequilibrium or the volatility come in that one side wins over the other. So more buyers or more sellers, whatever that is, so then it'll either take the price higher or it'll take the price lower. And the thing is, is what do we keep saying, whether it's in my book or in our courses, is always protect your downside. Don't worry about the upside. You want volatility to the upside. You just need to protect yourself if it does go down against you. So really, it's all about setting a stop loss there. So Woodside, great stock. It is volatile, and that's really what you want if you've got that style of portfolio for you. So even all those external forces that you're talking about and things happen, as long as you've got it covered, it's the main thing. And it's like with your car, and I think I used this analogy a couple of weeks ago, if you're flying down the road and all of a sudden, you know, the traffic light turns red, you put the brakes on, you know you're going to stop. Well, what if you didn't know you're going to stop? And that's the point with, with people with the stock market. They don't have an exit strategy or a proper exit strategy. And therefore, they don't know that if it goes against them and the stock starts to fall away against their trade and they start to get into losing positions, they don't know what to do. So that should be the first thing you need to do is how to protect your capital at all times. And that's setting the stop loss. Let's have a quick look at the stock. Anyway, I'll put my glasses on and we'll put bring it up on the screen. I do like it at the moment. You can see it's been really, really nice since the COVID low. It's, it is volatile. You can see these big moves that it does have. And if I use my little tool here, you can see some of those big moves. That's 32%. This one between there and there is 30%. Um, and then if you do the opposite, it's probably risen up. There's up 43%. So you can see how it moves. And these are month. this is a monthly bar chart. So over several months, it does move up. So you do need to have some really good solid rules on it. Currently, the stock is up. If I use my little tool again, you can see here it's up 30.67% since that low there in December. So January is strong, February is strong. Still looking really, really strong. If I go into the weekly chart, you can see it's still looking quite strong. I do like this stock. Last week it broke $28.12 and that's above that $27.60. So I think I like this stock. Um, and I don't have an issue with you owning the stock or and making sure you set your rules for entry and exit and everything else. You did say that you didn't own the stock at this particular time, but just set some rules around it, but I do like it. But again, I don't tend to worry about all the talk and that's what I constantly try and say on this. Always trade on what the stock is telling you because the big end, I had somebody say to me, I want to know, you know, the big end of town, they're always manipulating the stock. You know, how do we fight against that, so to speak, or how do we win or how do we make money opposed to that? That's what you, you, it's so easy to see what the big end of town are doing if you understand how to read the charts because they don't just buy and sell in a day. They can't do that. They're too big. They're moving too much money and they'll adversely affect the price of the stock. So therefore, it's easy for individuals to go in and look at the stock and go, okay, is there more buying and selling on that? And then make some rules around that trade and then get in and have the big end of town buying with you. And that's really what you want. And you want to sell out when they start selling out because they'll still be selling past you. And that's why we get these long uptrends and long downtrends because the money just keeps going in and in and in while the stock is looking good. I like Woodside at the moment. I think it's a really good pick by you. 
And thank you um, for sending your email in and thank you for everyone for sending in your questions. And as usual, so it's always the case every single week, we can't answer everyone. But remember, the best way to get your chance or public is to get your email answered is to publicly subscribe to this channel. And then type your question below in the comment section. So first, publicly subscribe to the channel. And it makes a little a red circle thing on your thing. And I know exactly that you're a publicly subscribed member to this channel. That's why I'm saying publicly support, subscribe, just not subscribe. That way I know you're a real supporter of this channel. And then I'll answer all of those questions first as I do each and every week. They're always the first questions I answer. And if there's time left over, I'll add some more in there. But um, remember that here on this channel, we do these reports or these Monday market reports each and every week. We also do our live stream, Janine and I, every Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. every single Tuesday night. So put that on your diet and we'll see you tomorrow night on our Australian Stock Market Show. Right now, subscribe. You need to hit the subscribe button now and click the bell on the right of it so you know when we upload and go live. But that's it for me. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.